Hi, this is David at Mash IT. Well, during the whole Apple Silicon release, we clamoured to get the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro reviews out, and we spent all of our time focusing on the laptops. Now, I've been so impressed with these laptops, but in all honesty, we didn't even give the Mac Mini a second thought. And it's only been recently where I never get to use my iMac because Gary's always using it, that I thought to myself, it'd be really nice to have a tiny portable little machine that I can pop into the office, stick to any monitor I want, and, and use that so I don't have to keep using my little 13-inch MacBook Pro, which is usually dumped around the house somewhere. So I picked up the M1 Apple Silicon Mac Mini. This is so much cheaper than the MacBook Pro, so I wanted to see how it compares and what the advantages to buying the entry-level product for this Apple Silicon compared to the MacBook Pro and what you're losing out on by going for this entry-level. And what I do feel is this Mac Mini, at the price that it is, gives most people an affordable entry into the new Apple Silicon and, and Mac ecosystem. Now this Mac Mini really is bare bones. What you get with a Mac Mini is the actual machine itself, which is completely non-upgradable. Now this is the eight gigabyte, 256 gigabyte SSD model, so the absolute base model. You can also buy the next one up, which is a 512 gigabyte for an extra few hundred pounds. But you're getting exactly the same Apple Silicon chip in there, which is also the same as in the MacBook Pro. So slightly more powerful than the Air because you've got the eight cores and eight GPU cores. And we are going to test it against the Pro and make sure that they are performing the same. Now, other than that, you get a power cable and you get a little pamphlet about it. And that is it. So it really is bare bones. So if you are buying this, you have to bear in mind, you will need to also buy yourself a keyboard and mouse and a display. And that's something we're going to obviously have a quick look at when we set up in a minute. So let's have a quick look around the Mac Mini and we'll see what we've got. Now, if you're used to the design, there's nothing new really with regards to the actual design of this Mac Mini from the last few years. Uh, apart from the, I think the space gray for the last Intel, this is this the standard old silver color. I actually quite like this for a change. Nothing on the front, nothing on the sides. You've got like a the Mac Mini base plate. And on the rear, we've got the ports. Now this is the reason that I became interested in actually buying a base model Mac Mini as opposed to always using my MacBook. Now obviously with a MacBook you've got two ports and a headphone jack and that's it. And that's great if you're using it as a laptop and you can also set yourself up a dongleless sort of environment in your office where you put one plug in and it does everything. And that is all great. But sometimes in a working environment it's nice to have ports. And at least if you're buying this entry level Mac Mini you're actually getting a few. So if we look across from left to right, we've got the power button, the power connector, an Ethernet jack, now that's really handy for me, two Thunderbolt ports, a dedicated HDMI port, and two USB 3 ports and a headphone jack. Now this is great because with this Apple Silicon, you can actually have two displays, one through the HDMI and one through the Thunderbolt, whereas on the MacBook Pro, you've only got the option of one unless you start mucking around with different uh, technologies to get a second display working. But out of the box, it is just one. So having a second is actually quite handy. And having USBs for me is very handy because I do still regularly plug in USBs all the time into my devices. And considering this is the actual cheapest entry level into the Apple Silicon, to actually have some ports on it is an absolute plus for me. Now, I just want to compare the size of it to an actual 13 inch MacBook Pro. So here we go, you can see the size compared to an actual 13 inch MacBook Pro. This thing, although a little bit obviously chunkier, is absolutely tiny. And the great thing about something like this is it's so small, you can find space for it anywhere on your desk and you can easily just throw it in your bag and take it somewhere else and set up a, another location, especially if there's already a monitor or a keyboard and mouse there. Now don't get me wrong, if you need a laptop with a battery and a screen, this is absolutely no good. But a lot of people are still using iMacs and desktops to do a lot of their work. Well, this tiny little package can do most of what people need to do for their work at a fraction of the cost of building yourself a desktop or buying an iMac. So we're now gonna just fire it up with a, a basic keyboard and mouse and we're gonna take a look at the experience on this new Mac Mini. Okay, so we've got a Mac Mini set up now, just got a, a monitor, keyboard and mouse plugged into it. Now the advantage that we've got here obviously having USB ports, is I can actually use my Logitech dongle from this keyboard and mouse rather than Bluetooth. I always find Bluetooth a little bit laggy in comparison to the Logitech dongle that you get with this wireless keyboard and mouse. Um, where I'm doing a lot of precision work with the keyboard and mouse, uh, you know, I do need that uh, dongle over Bluetooth. So obviously the dongle takes up one of the two USB ports on the back of the Mac Mini. 
The other one I'll normally save for my Samsung T5 that I'll usually use for my libraries, my video library, because obviously I do a lot of video editing. Now, this is handy because the base model only comes with 256 gigabytes. So by plugging this in and leaving it in, I've constantly now got another 512 gigabyte for my actual footage plugged into my mini. Now, as I said, this is the entry level model. It's 699 pounds. Now you don't get the keyboard, mouse and monitor. So it is very cheap, but you do have to obviously allow for those. Now, for example, in this setup, I've used a reasonably expensive keyboard and mouse, the Logitech MX Keys and MX Master. They cost just over hundred pounds for the both. And the monitor was about 300 pounds. But I particularly like this one because it's got decent speakers. It's got a decent um, HDMI display port and USB-C uh, output. So I can plug it into everything and a remote control, which I find really handy. It comes with a little rubber block as well so that you can put your remote control in and keep it sort of safe. But the advantage of that is I can adjust the speakers via the remote, change inputs. This has been really handy for this monitor. So one of the reasons I picked this one up um, I will link everything down below just in case you want something similar for your setup. But bearing in mind that obviously this is £699 in the UK, you will have to allow for extras. You could go cheap and probably spend about £150, £200 for a monitor, keyboard and mouse at the lower end and get up and running with a Mac. Obviously as well, that's Apple prices from the Apple Store. Very regularly you can find them cheaper on Amazon or other sites that will have special discounts. So always keep your eyes open if you are going to pick one up. Now, as I said earlier, this model is the base model, but it still has the eight CPU cores and eight GPU cores that you get in the MacBook Pro. So it's more powerful than the base MacBook Air. So spec for spec wise, this 699 model is about the same as the 1299 model MacBook Pro. Admittedly, you don't get the speakers, the screen and the keyboard and battery, which is obviously where that extra value comes in. But if you don't need that, if you don't need a laptop, for £699, this is a great way to get into the Apple ecosystem. And this is as powerful as many desktops. We had a decent Intel six core workstation with a uh, RX 570 that we used to use for video editing. And this blows that away and it's tiny and it is quiet and it doesn't even overheat like the, the our Intel system used to. So for the money, you're getting a fantastic little machine that you can just stick under your monitor or at the side of your desk. Now being the base model, this does have 256 gigabyte SSDs, which is why I mentioned the Samsung T5, and it also only has eight gigabytes of RAM. Now you can go to the Apple Store and upgrade that, but it's very expensive. And from what I've found in my day-to-day -day use, the eight gigabyte is actually more than sufficient for most people, I would say, with this new architecture. So I think unless you know you've got a need, I would stick with the eight gigabytes and save the money. Now that does take me on to the fact that this does have a fan in, unlike the MacBook Air, this is more like the MacBook Pro. It is a tiny fan and in day-to-day -day use, I don't hear it. Now we are gonna run Cinebench on it in a minute and we're gonna see how long it takes maxing it out before the fans do kick in so that they're audible. And we will mention that in a second in the performance section. Okay, so we wanna just quickly talk about the performance and I'm not gonna go too heavily in depth. We've done that in all of our other Apple Silicon M1 reviews. So I'm gonna gloss over this a little bit. First thing I wanna talk about is native performance and Rosetta performance, because as you've probably heard by now, Apple Silicon is an ARM-based chip and therefore doesn't run the usual Intel x86 architecture. So what that basically means is anything that's written directly for Apple Silicon, you're getting native performance and you get an amazing performance. So all of your Apple apps will already be updated. So Final Cut, Logic, iMovie, Calendar, all of those will be Apple Silicon ready and written for Apple Silicon in mind. Now, obviously a lot of the Intel apps or older apps are gonna to need to be ported across using what's known as Rosetta, which emulates the x86 code so that it can run on the Apple Silicon chip. And in all honesty, the performance has been so good in all the apps I've been using that you most of the time don't even realize whether you're using Apple Silicon or Rosetta for the apps that you're running. Now on the screen here, you'll see that I've got a Microsoft Office 2016. Now this is still running in Rosetta using the old X86 and it runs brilliantly. So there's no problems with the majority of your apps. I'm sure there are gonna be some that you have problems with. There always is teething issues with a new operating system. But for the majority of the applications we've used, we've not had any issues. The biggest issues I've had have been with Big Sur rather than Apple Silicon. Now moving on to the actual performance. I mean, first I'm gonna start off and look at Geekbench very quickly. Now I've completed the Geekbench 5 CPU uh, benchmark, and I've scored 1,733 on the single core, 7,525 on the multi-core score. 
that's incredibly comparable to the MacBook Pro. I then completed the OpenCL score, which uses the graphics on the new Apple Silicon chip. We scored 18,906 on this Mac Mini. Now, the MacBook Pro scored 19,200, and the MacBook Air scores 16,885. That's the base MacBook Air, that's got seven GPU cores, hence the lower score. So you can see this is pretty close to the MacBook Pro, and this is a very often margin of error when you're talking these sort of scores. We then completed the Metal benchmark, and we scored 21,904. The MacBook Pro scored 21,754, and the 7 GPU core Air scored 19,134. So again, you can see we're pretty much the same as the MacBook Pro, but above the Air with its mere 7 GPU cores rather than 8. Now for a bit of a longer test, we completed the Cinebench R23 benchmark in the multi-core and the single core. This fully loads the system for at least 10 minutes. Now we scored 7,677 points on the multi-core score, which is pretty much the same as the Apple Silicon MacBook Pro, and ahead, obviously, of the MacBook Air, because that does throttle a little bit come the end of this test. But one thing I would like to point out, when I ran Cinebench R23 on the MacBook Pro, after about seven or eight minutes, the fan started spinning up and it was audible. Not annoying, not loud, but audible. Throughout all of my testing so far, the fan hasn't spun up enough for it to be even noticeable on this machine. So that's really quite impressive. I guess that obviously they've got a bigger volume for the fan and a slightly larger fan in here. But really impressive work by Apple there. So the good thing about this Apple Silicon M1, it does seem to gain pretty well as well. Now I'm running uh, Dota 2 through Steam. This is at 1080p high settings. And I'm getting 50 to 60 frames per second. I could easily lower this down if I wanted to, but this is quite comfortable at this. And the best thing is, as well, is there's just no noise. And that's what's so strange when you're used to an Intel machine, coming to a machine where there is no noise. Okay, so on to the conclusion. Obviously this is the base model. You can upgrade it at the Apple Store. But what I think the base model provides is amazing cost performance ratio. 699 pounds if you buy it at Apple, less if you can shop around. It gives you an amazing machine that can do most people's day-to-day -day work silently and in a lovely small form factor that you can pretty much put anywhere and set up anywhere nice and quickly. My only regret with this Mac Mini is not getting one in when they first came out. Now obviously we focused on the MacBook Pros and the MacBook Airs, and if you need a laptop, then obviously you won't be looking at this in the first place. But if you're considering buying a desktop or an iMac, this should be on your radar too. This has probably got the same amount of performance as the 2020 iMac, and that's something we are gonna look at in an upcoming video. And it does it for 699 pounds, and I still can't believe that. And it's got ports, which is typically an Apple in these day and age. So you're getting a really good machine that you can use anywhere. You can pack it up and chuck it in a bag, and then you move it to another place, very easily with the size and the weight of this machine as well. So all in all, I think this has been a great purchase for us in the office. And if you are considering buying one, then I definitely think you should go and pick one up because they are really, really good value and a great way to get into the Apple ecosystem without spending an awful lot of money. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any comments or any questions, please pop them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. And also please like and subscribe. We've got plenty more videos on this mini coming up and plenty more content coming soon. Thank you for watching.